Hello and welcome to this webinar delivered by the ISM Trust in partnership with the AMBA Trust. I'm Maria Vizitiu and I'm Member Engagement and Events Officer at the ISM. And today I'm joined by our CEO, Deborah Annett, who will give a quick introduction shortly. Professor Adam Ockelford, founder of the Amber Trust, who will conduct the presentation on the new Amber SoundTouch resource. And Annabelle Martin, CEO of Amber Trust, who together with Adam will moderate some questions from the audience after the presentation. Before we begin, we just have a few points to mention. You should be able to see us and the PowerPoint presentation displayed on your screen. You should also be able to hear us, but we can't hear you. So if you experience any technical difficulties, such as sound or quality issues, please let us know in the questions box and we'll make attempts to resolve the issue. This webinar is being recorded and will be available to view on the ISM's website at ism.org forward slash webinars. If you think of any questions during this webinar, please let us know in the questions box and we will leave some time at the end to answer as many of them as possible. I will now hand over to our CEO, Deborah Annitz, for a short introduction. Welcome to everybody who has joined us this morning for this fantastic uh, presentation from Professor Adam Ockelford. I have already had the pleasure of watching the presentation, which is both inspiring and incredibly interesting. And you will see uh, a wide range of teaching going on and meet wonderful young practitioners like Seth, Gary and the extraordinary Ashley. The ISM is delighted to be working with the Amber Trust on this project and you can find all the details on the ISM Trust website. Just one or two more words about the Amber Trust before we get going. It is a charity. It uh, looks after and teaches approximately 500 visually impaired children. But because it is a charity, it needs to raise money. It needs to raise about 300,000 pounds per annum. So do bear that in mind as you watch the presentation. But I think there is learning here, not just uh, in terms of visually impaired children, but in terms of teaching all children. And we must remember at these times of COVID-19, that the arts are under threat. We are seeing music disappearing from our schools, uh, even though the arts are more important than ever. So without any more ado, I will hand over to Adam Ockelford. Thank you. Thanks very much, Deborah. And it's, it's lovely, I was gonna say it's lovely to see you all, but I can't see anyone. So it's great that we're all together. Of course, we should be at the Royal Abbot Hall in the lovely Elgar room. So I hope you've got a gin and tonic ready to, um, to raise a glass as I speak. So a very, very warm welcome to Amber Sound Touch, our new online teaching resource for those working with visually impaired children. Next slide. So the good news is that Amber Sound Touch is freely available anywhere in the world to those who want information and advice. It's mainly for music teachers, of course, but also therapists, uh, community musicians, and others, including parents who want to know more about working with blind and partially sighted children. And very importantly, it includes those with additional needs. About three quarters of visually impaired children have additional disabilities of one sort or another, including autism and learning difficulties. But beyond this, I think as Deborah said, good practice with any child with special needs is just good practice. And um, anyone working with a blind child will learn such a lot about how they teach. And I've certainly found over the years that a lot of the ideas um, that have come from working with children with visual impairment have really informed my teaching with children who can see. Next slide. So why is Amber Sound Touch needed? Well, when I started working at a school for the blind 40 years ago, um, the biggest barrier that children faced then who had special needs was attitudes. And today, the biggest barrier that children with special needs face is attitudes. Not, not because people want to be unkind or want to uh, be discriminatory, but the bottom line is it's, it's quite rare to come across a child who can't see. And so uh, when you do, it can be a bit of a shock and people feel quite disempowered. Uh, they have lots of questions, you know, how do I 
how does the child find the piano stool? Uh, what about music? Uh, you know, they won't be able to read print. And so sometimes, unfortunately, teachers say, well, I'd rather not risk it. I'd rather not risk the embarrassment uh, for me and for the child. But the, the, the key message is that everyone can uh, work with children with disabilities and, and those with visual impairment. And the idea of the Sound Touch resource is to help you to do that. At the heart of the website are 13 fantastic short films. And these introduce a range of children, right from a toddler called Seth, right up to uh, a young woman uh, learning music at Oxford as an undergraduate. So the full range of age and intellectual ability. There's a long film about children with complex needs who you'll mainly find in special schools. And another key message is that even having quite severe or even profound disabilities needn't be a barrier to musical engagement. Some of the most extraordinary uh, young musicians I've ever worked with have severe learning difficulties, as you'll see. Aside from the stories, there are 29 what we've called strategies, and these simply are ideas and tips for working with blind children. And they cover a whole range of issues, almost like frequently asked questions, ranging from safeguarding, which of course is always top of our agenda, to how to read and write music in Braille. Next slide, please. So to get started, um, the website is now live and you can find it at that address, https colon slash slash ambertrust.app. And when you click on that, the opening page looks like this. Next slide, please. There you'll see um, the opening page. And um, the great news is there's a film right at the front uh, to help you, uh, to, to tell you what's on the site. So perhaps we could have a look at that. Thank you. So we can watch the film, yeah, here we go. Sound Touch is all about inspiring music teachers to show them that everyone can work with children with a visual impairment. So, what have we got to do now? Fields. Fields. So I go, coffee, coffee, Coca-Cola, coffee. That's it, right? When you're asked to teach a blind child music, it can be a really daunting prospect. These films will show you just how easy it is, what fun it can be, and above all, how much you'll learn yourself as a teacher. Strong <laughs> and it will widen your horizons as to just what music teaching means. How are you going to change that now? What can you do? She has taught me to relax while I'm playing. <laughs> That's really high. Sound Touch has 13 videos, each one a story of a child or children. <laughs> These films feature children from the early years. From children who are still learning to express themselves through sound to those who are studying music in an advanced level. So I'll turn up, he'll put a kettle on. That is a very, very good Magnificat, if I may oh, say so. Oh, thank you. And saving that age. She said to me, how are we going to work at her first tutorial? I'm not thinking at all about her sight. I go around a lot of schools and see children I think have potential, and it's tragic to get to 16, and no one's ever felt able to actually engage with that person. What these films show is the power of music to transform children's lives.
Great, thank you. We have the next slide, please. And the next one after that. Yeah, so choosing the right section for you. Um, now, there are four teaching roles that Amber Sound Touch addresses. Uh, and below the picture of Francis there, you'll see a button saying teaching roles. So, and indeed above him as well, there's two buttons. Um, I say click on one of those and you get to the next page. New slide, please. And there they are. So there's working with children in the early years. And I think one of the great things I hope going forward is that there'll be a real recognition um, from music hubs and others with the new national plan for music that working with children in the early years really is at the core of what we do. There's a fantastic amount of research now showing that the musical mind really does get going in those first few months and years of life. And that's the most critical time. And even more so for children with disabilities, it turns out. So that's a crucial area. I'm always encouraging people to, to go into. And if working with blind children is terrifying, working with blind babies is even more terrifying, but it's amazing fun and they are fantastic to work with very often, with very, very keen ears. Next, the biggest section, which is for instrumental and vocal tutors. And then there's a, a whole section on working with visually impaired children who have additional disabilities, particularly profound and multiple learning difficulties. And finally, the section I suppose that's really most close to my heart, which is children who have dementia. So there are a, a, a small number uh, of children who have neurodegenerative disease, and actually music is the most important thing very often in their lives. Music will uh, continue to function when language has ceased, and it can be a source of comfort and well-being right until the end of a child's life. So it's a very, very special area and one that's very, very worthwhile getting into. So let's start um, by looking at the four sections. Next slide, please. So working with the children in the early years, you click on the button. Next slide, please. And there you'll find set out the stories and strategies. Uh, there's one story uh, to do with this, which is Seth. So we'll have a look at Seth first and then have a look at some of the strategies. Now you'll notice in the strategies that there are things called sounds of intent, levels two, three, four, and five. Sounds of Intent is a project I've been involved with for 20 years now, I had the pleasure of developing really, and that set out for the first time just how young children, including those with disabilities, develop musically. And so really a lot of the framework of Amber Sound Touch is based on the Sounds of Intent thinking. So for now, let's have a look at Seth and see how he's getting on. So next slide, please. Click on Seth's story. And underneath the film is some text, which will explain what's going on. But without further ado, let's watch Seth in action. There's no stopping a superhero. Seth was about eight weeks old when I noticed that something wasn't quite right with his eyes. They were moving from side to side quite rapidly. He was sent off for all these tests and it was later confirmed that he had Leber's congenital amaurosis. It's a degenerative condition, so now Seth at three has no vision at all. <laughs> No situation is too drastic Because he is made of pure elastic There's no stopping a superhero My name is Gary Day and I work in the field of accessible and inclusive music making and education and I'm a little Amber practitioner. You see any sign of trouble? Have no when I come to a family I think it's really important to play music as soon as possible and it makes sense to do a hello song. Here we go, ready? We'll sing hello to Seth, ready? Hello Seth, hello Seth, glad that you are here. Hello Seth, hello Seth, glad that you are here.
Great, there's a little bit of Seth uh, in action there. Um, next slide, please. So now, after watching the film, you may well want to revisit uh, some of the the uh, stories and strategies. So if you click back to the uh, strategies button there, next slide, please. You'll find some of the strategies. Um, and these really are the practical advice that teachers need in order to get going. Next slide, please. So we'll click on getting started. Next slide. And there we go. You, you come into another page and there are sort of subcategories. So you can, you can um, find the thing that interests you, just like frequently asked questions. So before the first session, often people want to know what to do, how to meet and greet a child you can't see. Do I sort of shake the hand? Do I touch them on the shoulder? What do I do? Working with parents is key. I think the Amber Trust over its 25 years realized that it's we just don't work with children, we work with families, and that's really important. And of course, crucial at this, uh, this particular time, particularly is safeguarding. Um, so let's click on safeguarding. There we go, and you'll find there's the detail for you. So clearly, um, we all have a, a, a obligation to work in a child's best interests. And there you'll see some of the, the uh, suggestions laid out about parents being present, about the particular vulnerability of uh, children who can't see. And also, the reason they, we use the said sound touch is a theme running through the whole, uh, the whole website, really, because Blind children need a good deal of physical contact in order to relate to other people and to learn. And so it's really terribly important that that is sorted out with parents, with schools, with the policies and so on. And how to, to teach in a safe way that involves touching children is a key theme of uh, Amber Sound Touch. So then you can go on to the next strategy or you can go back. So next slide. Let's go back and we'll look at the instrumental and vocal tuition next, which is the largest section on the site. Next slide, please. And this time we've got 10 short films, um, right from Isa, who you saw in the introduction, uh, right through to Zoe's story. Uh, so it's a full range, different instruments, different styles, uh, some learning notation, some learning improvisation, some learning about new instruments. Uh, one or two of the children are on the autism spectrum, so how to teach really using quite little language. Music itself is the most powerful language, as we know, and I think one of the lessons I've learned over the years is, you know, a great lesson doesn't involve too much talking. And if that's true for blind children, I think it's true for all children. Try and let the music speak. So let's have a look at the next slide. See one of these videos. Right, we'll start with Joseph. Joseph is, uh, about, uh, he's just going to explore in this video some Indian classical instruments that he hasn't seen before. And he's going to meet a fantastic Indian classical musician called Baluji. And it's lovely to see two people who are both totally blind actually interacting with each other and exchanging information. It's quite a magical sequence, I think. So next slide, please. And here we go. So I am sitting here opposite, just in front of you, as you can hear me. This is the sitar. How many strings it has? It's yeah. got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, seven on top. And blind people like me and Joseph or anybody else, we don't see anything, so we touch. Do you see underneath there is another set of the strings? Underneath it. Yeah, underneath those seven strings he just played. Any instrument I give and I ask them to touch first, explore, and then I ask their opinion what uh, part of the instrument, what it does. 
And then I tell them what actually happens. They said more. After this big peg, you see, this one the big? Yeah. After one, this, the one, one, two, one, three, two, three, three, four, four five, six, six seven, seven, eight, eight nine, nine, ten, eleven, eleven twelve. No, eleven. Are there, are there eleven strings there? Eleven strings, yes. For a child who can't see, it's really vital that they have first-hand experiences of things because they'll hear stuff on the radio, on the internet, see stuff on the television, but they won't know, of course, what's actually making the sounds. Or they might hear a sitar, but have no idea of the actual instrument. So if you hold it like that, and the right arm goes like this, around this, yeah, and good, very good. And when I have to see what they are doing, I have to put my hands on their hands. So it's more touching. And it's not like sighted people, you do this and you do that, and you look at that and it's done. And we have to be in touch with each other. What, 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 what are those for? That, that, those pegs for you? Those up there? Take my hand and show me. Great, that's a bit of Joseph. Next to Joseph, you'll find in the list Eleanor. Now, Eleanor is a fantastic young singer. It's been great fun working with her. And um, in this clip, you'll see her working with her teacher, Alice. And Alice is also visually impaired, as it happens. She's got um, stargards which is a condition that uh, gradually your, your vision goes. And so both Eleanor and Alice actually have that kind of vision that they've lost in a sense. So they have visual memory to work with. And of course, it's quite different working with someone like Eleanor, um, who has seen completely and can still see a bit, uh, compared with someone like Joseph, who's never seen. So I think it's really important when starting to, to work with children that uh, you can ask them uh, what the best approach is, what the kind of, sort of level of support they need and also parents uh, as well are very important with with young children and Ellen is one of those who's very very good at saying how she wants to learn uh, and the sort of strategies that are helpful for her. Ellen is also starting to learn braille music and interestingly people think oh braille music that sounds quite modern but actually Louis Braille invented it himself alongside the literary code right back in the 19th century and uh, the challenge for English speaking users is that Braille uses French uh, music words. So, for example, in, in French, C in English is written as D for do. And as um, Harry, Eleanor's Braille music teacher, will explain, that leads to um, some initial complications. But as we'll see, Eleanor is well on top of them. So, can we play the next slide and Eleanor's video, please? Can we use our arms like we did last week with that big painting yeah. motion? I want us to use lots of energy through that so that we keep our energy okay. up all the way through the phrase. Off you go. Once a man fell in the world. So Please. let's try those again once more, Eleanor, if you don't mind. We yeah, can do that big fine. motion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that'd be yeah. great. Everyone if you can show us the yeah. big movement. Step step. That's it. And we did the sure big I'm hand. Sure. Oh, this is one big smooth motion. It's really great having Eleanor's mum, Kelly, to help because sometimes Eleanor can't see Alice and Alice can't necessarily see what Eleanor's doing. And it's lovely the way that Kelly just steps in and shows Eleanor what Alice means. Like my arm's a big paintbrush almost. Yes, I remember what you said it was last week. You said it was like a rainbow. Yeah, painting you a rainbow yeah? almost. You're painting a big rainbow in the air, okay? So you yeah. can do that on every single phrase for me, okay? So nice and confidently. Off you go. Once a man fell in the well. Splish, splash, splosh, he sounded. If he had not fallen in, he would not have drowned it. Good. There's so much to think about, isn't there? <laughs> so much to think about. Shall we go on to the next song? Okay. okay. So we're going to look at pitch today yep. and the reason for that yep. is because with Braille yep. the top four dots just give you the pitch okay. and the bottom two yep. are for the value like semi-brief quavers. Okay. 
so it gets a bit confusing if we try and do yeah. both at the same time yeah okay well i was a secondary school teacher for 16 years um teaching modern foreign languages both uh, spanish and french up to a level so when i learned brown music i treated it like another language and it's just so much repetition but eventually it kind of gets stuck in your head this is the confusing thing a C is written like a D, and it's because okay. the French starts off with the DO, okay. and they go from there, okay? So it's almost like it's always one letter higher. One letter up. Exactly. Okay. okay. So in front of you, there's my little braille version for you. So the first letter, it's a C, so the pitch C, mm -hmm. so it's a C note. Go on, can this you read up next? Quaver is D. Yes, exactly. Okay. So the normal sign for a D is actually a C in music. Okay. Right, okay. So do you want to read the next one out? D, quaver is E. Okay. Yeah, you're getting the pattern. And then E, quaver is F. Good. Okay. There we go, a little glimpse of uh, Braille music there. There's a lot more information um, online which we can uh, point you to uh, for those that, that want to work. We found it often works best. Uh, Amber has quite a network of support from blind adults who use uh, Braille music. And so we try to put, it often takes um, two teachers to, to work together. So you've got perhaps a Braille music specialist working with an instrumental specialist uh, to help the child. Right, um, I'm going to tell you a bit about Ashley now. Ashley is uh, 16 when this film was made. She's totally blind and actually has a severe hearing loss and she's on the autism spectrum. So you might think, wow, uh, what's she doing doing music? But it's just about conceptions and preconceptions. Ashley is one of the most fantastic, uh, beautiful musicians, you know, every molecule in her body seems to vibrate with music. Music is her obsession, it's her every breathing moment. Uh, she's thinking about music in one way or another. And she really epitomizes the fact that disability need be no barrier to, to really outstanding musical achievement. And above all, uh, despite the challenges that, that Ashley and any teacher will face, uh, she's just great fun uh, to work with. So here's a little bit of Ashley and me. Um, Learning the piano. A bit of Grieg, I think. I played the video, thanks. Beautiful fingers. Ashley was born at 23 weeks and five days. She's blind, autistic, and has a hearing impairment. Right, you choose the next one. Okay, I will. Yep. We'd always adapted the toys we bought for her. Little toy keyboards, and she used to press the letters and, and know the note and make little tunes on the boards. It was all musical toys which was given to her because she couldn't see to do anything else. She was gifted an old piano, which she then moved up to. That was probably when she was three or four. Ashley had a very good teacher at school who had a contact at Roehampton who she got in touch with and from there we were invited up to meet Adam and then it all began. Come on Ashley, do something else. I can't do it at speed. Okay, half button. Can you sit up nice and straight please? Here we go.
When you approach teaching a sighted child, there's a kind of traditional way of doing it. So the child looks at some music, the teacher shows them how to hold their hand and they, they map the, what they can see onto what they can hear, copying the teacher by looking. But someone like Ashley, she starts first of all with the sound. And then we have to map the movements that we need to make to get the sounds. But of course, she hasn't got a visual model to guide her. Yeah, okay. Ashley, Ashley, when you do these bits, you need a lovely, brilliantly strong little finger. Really strong finger. It's really important that we feel comfortable uh, and Ashley sort of gives me permission to, to touch my hands and I can touch her hands. So do a strong finger. It is the appropriate way to teach a blind child. And usually it's her hand on top of mine. So she's in control, she can feel my hand. And then she maps that model and thinks, yeah, I can copy that. Strong finger. If you want to know how she got on with the hard bit, you'll have to watch the whole film. <laughs> Lovely. Right. Um, and then we, as well as the stories, there are the strategies. So let's have a look at one of those, perhaps. Next slide, please. Now, memorising music is something that uh, is very important for, for lots of musicians, but particularly for blind musicians. Even if you use Braille music, which involves obviously using at least one hand, ideally two hands, um, that clearly prevents you from playing an instrument at the same time. And there's one or two slight exceptions, like a trumpet, you can perhaps do a bit, but almost all instruments require um, both hands. So uh, memorising music is essential, even with notation and even with singers. Sometimes you'll see a blind singer in a choir. But because Braille works uh, in a sort of linear way, you can't actually read words and music at the same time. So uh, people singing in a choir either need to memorise the music and have the words to read, or memorise the words and have the music to read, or of course memorise both, which is what I most blind people Could do. Try again? Oh, I've got an Alexa talking at me in the background. Uh, now then, so let's have a look what uh, memorising music um, uh, entails. So we click on memorising music memorizing and there we've got um, the importance of memory to blind musicians. I think the key thing is a lot of the skills like Ashley's perfect pitch for example and her memory, people think that's the sort of gift that blind children have and there's no such thing as a gift. There are abilities that children develop and not being able to see from an early age helps develop those abilities. So for example about 40% of uh, congenitally blind children go on to develop a perfect pitch. And of course it is in a way a compensation for not being able to see, but it's, it's, a, it's um, something you can track in the first 24 months of life as the brain wires itself up in a different way. And so it is also with, with memory, um, because um, I suppose in a way sighted people get a bit lazy, don't they? There's, there's things written down. Uh, if, if I need to remember a phone number or a shopping list, I, I just grab a pencil and paper. Uh, blind people can't do that and so right from an early age, right from knowing where you put your cup of tea down, memory is incredibly important and so on the whole uh, it's, it's, it's a skill that blind children uh, tend to have acquired but it's something that can be improved with practice and again there's a great lesson for all of us. I've learned such a lot from listening and watching how my pupils learn music uh, and it certainly helped me uh, memorise things as well. Right, next slide please. So uh, the third section um, is working with visually impaired children uh, with complex needs. As I said at the, at the outset, something like 75% of blind and partially sighted children have additional disabilities and quite a few of those have quite profound disabilities. And I think for these children music, it's more than a hobby, it's more than a pastime, it really can be a lifeline, it can be their way of communicating with the world, their way of reaching out into the world of other people. And it's so incredibly important that they have musical opportunities and not just sort of therapeutic uh, opportunities. Music education must be their first 
uh, absolute right to, to have. And so um, time and time again, people are surprised as I go around special schools uh, and children can actually learn to play instruments, can learn, like Ashley really, to be advanced musicians despite having severe learning difficulties. So let's have a look at what the working with visually impaired children with complex needs page looks like. Next slide, please. And there we've got um, five children in the, in the film, which we haven't got time to, to show today, but I do hope you'll have a look at it. Um, from Aaron, who's just at the very early sensory stage. From Alice, who's using some technology, a sound beam. Drew, who loves dancing and singing. And if you want to see me attempting to dance, that's where to do it. Uh, Felix, who is deaf and blind and uh, absolutely adores rock and roll and the drums. And young Jack, who's a, a little boy, but he's he's learning to play the piano. And there are the strategies, there's sounds of intent again, which will, that framework of musical development uh, will guide you through. Next slide, please. And finally, the, the area that's really closest to my heart, working with visually impaired children with a neurodegenerative disease. Again, there's um, strategies and one story, which we can see on the next slide, which is Luke. Uh, Luke, he's like Ashley really. He, he, his life just revolves around music. He lost his sight when he was quite little, aged about six or seven. And on the day, well, his mum still remembers a particular day when he gave up trying to read a book and put on a recording of some music instead. And he says at that point, his life changed. He can remember it. And that music became the most important thing in his life. There are also strategies, um, and here music can be used as well as uh, for its own sake. It can help with memory, it can help with movement, it can help with socialization, feeling, communication, and understanding. And concerts, Luke adores going to concerts, and it's one of the greatest things of his life. Next slide, please. So, to, to wind up, um, just as the hedge trimmer is getting going next door, I don't know if you can hear it. Um, I told them a 40 minutes, so it took me literally. Um, so please do use the resources on the site and share with any colleagues you think may be interested. We are very fortunate to getting funding for the project. So the resources are there for anyone to use, to download, uh, to use in whatever way you like. Please do give us feedback. Uh, we've already had quite a lot from our very good um, focus group who've been helping us, but we're always seeking to improve things. Uh, you can contact us anytime on the Amber Trust's website. And as Deborah mentioned at the outset, we need to raise about £300,000 a year uh, to support the 500 visually impaired children that we do uh, across the UK. So if ever you want to have a concert for us or something, that would be really good. Next slide, please. And thanks. Well, thanks above all to the children and young people involved. It's a huge privilege to be able to go and film young people, uh, young people's lives and their families in action. Um, it can be quite nerve wracking if you're a teacher to, to agree to be filmed, but um, it's a really good experience, I must say, and, and we had great fun doing it. I work at the University of Roehampton, uh, leading the Applied Music Research Centre, which is really the world leading place for uh, research into music, visual impairment and autism. And we saw the development and production of Amber Sound Touch with Dr. Hannah Marsden. Huge thanks to Evans Wolf Media for shooting what a very, very engaging film. They really captured the, the spirit of the children. We said we want inspirational films, please, and they certainly came up with those. Particular thanks to Max Mai, who lives in Germany, and that's his firm there, Max Interactive, for creating the most fantastic website. He seems to do it effortlessly and as you talk to him he's creating it really is amazing. Max is a great guy and he's got a wonderful family including Mika, a uh, little boy who's an um, amazing musician despite not being able to see very well and we've become great friends as a, as a result of working together and this has been a wonderful project. You can see Mika online as well, he has his own YouTube channel and has been keeping most of Germany uh, engaged I think during lockdown. And finally, we must say a massive thank you to Julia and Hans Rousing, who provided the lion's share of the funding for the project, to the constant support of the Maria Marina Foundation, who've been fantastic to Amber over the years, and to the GC Gibson Charitable Trust for their generosity in making 
this whole venture possible. And thank you to you. Um, we've had over 250 people listening uh, right through the webinar. So I do hope you've got some questions for us. Uh, and if, if you have to go now, then please do email anytime or uh, get in touch. We'll be very pleased to speak to you. So thank you very much. And I'll hand over now to uh, questions. Thanks. Hi, Annie. Hi, thanks, Adam. That's brilliant. Um, we've got some really good questions here for you. Uh, I, hope, I, hope they're not, been, I hope they're not too difficult. They're not too difficult, no. So um, the first one I've got is a really good question, which is, do you need to be a specialist musician to use these resources? Mm. For instance, can QTVIs use these resources in the homes with families? Definitely, yes. Yeah. So I think one of the... Aha, I've got some feedback, Annie. You might need to mute yourself. Right, so absolutely. A lot of, as I was writing the uh, materials, um, it struck me that actually these go beyond just music. The kind of advice that people want of how to teach a blind child uh, is all contained there. And so as a QTVI, you can get hold of the materials. A lot of it will make sense to you because it's the sort of thing you're trained to do. But it also means you can then advise teachers, music teachers and families uh, as, as to how to do things. And certainly the materials on early years and complex needs are definitely not the province just of specialist musicians. Anyone can use the resources and have a go. Right. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Another good question we've had is from somebody who says they're supporting a blind child with natural music ability. And the issue is the child's reluctance to get involved. So however much the teacher and families are trying to encourage the child, they don't really want to get involved. So have you got any suggestions on how they could encourage them? Sure, yes, uh, of course. Um those 40% of blind children who have absolute pitch, not all of them want to do music. Um, but normally I find it's a question of not going with any preconceived ideas of what music a child wants to engage with. Um, very, very often children uh, do engage with music, but they engage with music that they like. And that may be the music that they found on YouTube or music that accompanies their, the, some of the games they play online. And blind children do like playing games. Uh, online as well um, and so I tend always in the first lesson to say just to, just to find out what the child's interested in and if they've got a favorite piece of music a pop song or whatever just to, to bring it along and uh, I'll let's have a go at playing it let's discover how to do it and then usually once you've hooked the child in you can then uh, engage them in a broader way when when Ashley first came to me I think her obsession of the time was ABBA so uh, we did quite a lot of ABBA to start with. But you know what? Uh, and she said, I hate classical music. Uh, I said, okay, Ash, fine. Here's um, a friend of ABBA called Bach. ABBA loved Bach, and I think you're going to love him too. And here's another one called Greed. And before you knew it, Ashley was absolutely hooked. I spent about an hour last week going through the whole of the Bach's 48 Preludes and Fugues, telling her which key they were all in, how many voices there were, and she's absolutely hooked. So very often, um, it's just a question of starting where the child is at and growing outwards from there. So good luck, but please do get in touch if it would help and we can have some more ideas. And coming out of that question as well, um, someone else has asked, which I think is interesting, is it too late for, to help, is it too late for a child if they're sort of 14, 15 to start learning music? Mm. Um, no, of course, it's it's never too late. Um, it's I have to be honest and say the earlier you start, the easier it is. But I, uh, as a teacher at a special school in years gone by, we used to have a lot of teenagers who came in with things like um, retinitis pigmentosa, for example. We'd had accidents, um, in one case, um, fireworks and uh, car accidents. Uh, had lost their sight later on and as part of the process of readjustment sometimes those those teenagers can can really get into music in a big way and discover that the music they enjoyed listening to actually they never thought of it before actually i can learn an instrument i can learn the electric guitar or the drums or i can get into computers and make music that way i always remember 
a, a fantastic lad I worked with called Colin, who was a great big strapping 16 year old who, who lost his sight tragically in an accident and was, and was very angry with the world. And one day uh, he came to me and said, I want to learn the piano. I said, right, Colin, okay. And he had huge hands and he never really used them for anything very detailed like that. And you know, I, I didn't, I just didn't think he'd be able to do it, but he stuck at it. At the end of a year, he'd written a song uh, and again, he could play, accompany himself singing it to his love of his life, who was called Double Diamond, I remember. And I thought, this is just beautiful, it's poetic. It's a great big lad who discovered music actually as a result of losing his sight. Any more fantastic. questions, Annie? Fantastic, thank you. So there's lots of questions and we're not probably not going to be able to get through them all. And what I'd like to say to everyone is please do, if we haven't answered your question, get in touch, send us an email um, and we can deal with it that way. Um, it's great that you're all so involved and want to know more. So we're here, so please do get in touch. Um, and thank you for joining us. It's been a really great presentation. Thanks to Adam, thanks to everybody. Um, Deborah and Maria, who's masterminded the whole thing. Um, yeah, and hope to um, see you soon. There's lots of lovely comments coming through, Adam, saying thanks. Oh. Fantastic, so well done. Great, I particularly enjoyed my wife's Alexa joining in early on. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> There's always a technical issue, isn't there? Yeah. Great, wonderful, and please, please do get in touch. We're always happy to to, to discuss things one-to-one. Uh, -one. Thank you. Thank you to you both, and thank you for everyone who attended the uh, the webinar. Any questions that we've received, then we didn't have a chance to answer. I'll pass on to um, Adam and Annabelle. Um, and if there's any other questions that you want to send us, you can either um, direct them to the ISM website, um, or and we'll pass them on to um, to Adam, or you can email them directly um, so yeah thank you again for attending thank you both for for the lovely presentation and we hope to see you another another at another webinar soon thank you bye